Crackles, I got so many answers to that question, I wouldn't even know where to start. Hello Lost fans, it is me, Shawnee B, and today I'm going to try to talk about everything that happened in the 11th episode of Season 6 called Happily Ever After. The term Happily Ever After, as I'm sure most of you guys already know, is at the end of most fairy tales, and it seems to imply here that there will be a happy ending, maybe not just at the end of this episode, but at the end of the entire series. Also, it could imply that this flash sideways, and I'll talk a lot more about this, is the happy ending. But for now, time for the Fast Reflex Awards. <laughs> And boom goes the dynamite. Great job to the 10 of you down here. You guys were the fastest last week, so good job. Okay, this episode is really similar to the other Desmond episodes like Flashes Before Your Eyes and The Constant, where it deals with consciousness travel between the timelines. This recap's gonna be similar to the Abbe Terno recap I did a couple weeks ago, where I'm not gonna break it up into parts like I usually do, but just recap it as the episode happened. So let's get to it. We start off with Desmond waking up in the Hydra infirmary, yelling for Penny, obviously still thinking he's off the island. Widmore comes and explains to him that he was brought back to the island, which causes Desmond to snap and rough Widmore up a bit. <laughs> they restrain him and Widmore yells out, the island isn't done with you, Desmond, just like Eloise told him last season. Jin watches the whole thing and asks Widmore why they brought Desmond back. Widmore says, I'll show you, telling Zoe to bring Jin to the generator room so they can start the test. Zoe's like, but it's not ready. And Widmore's all, just do it. So Zoe takes Jin to the control room and Seamus lets Zoe know that they aren't even close to being ready. They test the generator, it fails. So a guy named Simmons goes inside to check the circuits. Seamus tells some white rabbit that he calls Angstrom to get ready because he's going in next. Hmm, Angstrom, <laughs> kind of a random name for a rabbit but definitely seems to be named after the measurement that's used for wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, which we'll see in just a bit. The bunny could also be named after Harold Engstrom, nicknamed Rabbit, who's the main character in some of John Updike's books like Rabbit Run, Rabbit is Rich, Rabbit Redux, I think you get the idea. All of those books have themes of redemption, life and death, obviously major themes in Lost as well. So anyways, some moron <laughs> decides it would be a good time to see what happens when he pulls down a switch, causing poor old Simmons to get caught in the middle of some shockwaves from the generator. And there's a small blooper here. When they yell for the technician to turn it off, he turns the switch down more instead of up to turn it off, yet it goes off. They all run down and find Simmons fried like bacon. When Widmore strolls by, looks at the body, and then tells him to put Desmond inside. Desmond struggles to get free, but Widmore tells him that if everything he's heard about him is true, he'll be fine. He also tells Desmond that he's gonna need to have him make a sacrifice when the experiment is over. When Desmond says, what do you know about sacrifice? Widmore lets him know that his son, AKA Daniel, died for the sake of the island. Back in the control room, Widmore tells Jin that Desmond is the only person he knows of to have survived a catastrophic electromagnetic event and that if Desmond can't survive it again, everyone will die. So Widmore pulls a switch himself and Desmond gets caught up in the shockwave shift. This causes his consciousness to travel between the original and flash sideways timelines. We see Desmond who's looking at his reflection in the Oceanic Airlines arrival board, his kind of mirror moment of this episode. Hurley passes by and lets him know that their luggage is on Carousel 4, even though we see Desmond pick up his bags at Carousel F2. Hmm. Desmond goes there, he helps out Claire, and finds out that Claire doesn't know if she's having a boy or a girl. He says it's gonna be a boy, he just knows it. Desmond's driver is George Minkowski. Remember, he's the guy in the freighter from the Constant episode who died from consciousness traveling. He takes Desmond to Widmore's office, where the two of them genuinely like each other, unlike the original timeline. We also see a painting in the background here. It's of a scale, one side's holding white objects, and the other side's holding black objects. Hmm, look familiar? There isn't just one painting here, however. There's actually two. We can see that one has a black frame while the other has a white frame. Interesting. We also see that the scales are evenly balanced. Maybe it's signifying that this timeline is truly balanced. Desmond notices a model of a sailing ship, the same kind Widmore made Desmond use to get to the island in the original timeline. Widmore tells Desmond that his son is a musician, that he wants to combine classical music with rock, and that Mrs. Widmore wants Driveshaft to play with his son at their charity event, 
but the lead bass guitarist was arrested for drug overdosing. Desmond says that it'll help, so Widmore's grateful and pours him some McCutcheon whiskey, saying Desmond is worth it, unlike in the original timeline where he said Desmond wasn't worth it. So Desmond goes to the courthouse and Charlie walks outside. He ignores Desmond and walks across the street uncaring about the cars about to ram into him. They end up in a bar named Jack's, and Charlie knows Desmond isn't happy because he hasn't experienced spectacular, conscious-altering love like he claims that he experienced in Flight 815 when he choked on the bag of heroin. He claims that when he choked on the bag of heroin, he saw a blonde woman, aka Claire, and that he saw the truth in everything. As they're driving away from the bar, Charlie wants Desmond to see what he's talking about, so he grabs the wheel and drives off the pier into the water. Desmond gets free and swims up to get his breath, but when he dives back down, Charlie wakes up and stares right at Desmond, putting his palm against the window exactly like he did in the looking glass hatch when he was drowning and he had the Not Penny's Boat written on his palm. This causes Desmond to have a vision from the original timeline, but it vanishes and he saves Charlie. So this episode seemed to indicate that near-death experiences can also cause you to experience flashes of the original timeline. Both Charlie and Desmond experienced this when they almost died. For example, remember back to last season when Charlotte was dying and one of her last words were, I know more about ancient Carthage than Hannibal himself? Well, we know this timeline and this alternate reality, she works at a museum. This is why Juliet said it worked, because when she died, she could see both realities. Or like I mentioned last recap, if there's more than two, every reality. When you die, you would only be alive in that other reality. So maybe as you're dying, some sort of shift happens where you're able to see that other reality during that near-death experience. The question here, though, is does Charlie purposely put his palm against the window because he knows it will trigger Desmond's memory of the time that happened in the original timeline? I definitely think so, because when he does it, he stares at Desmond, and then he has that little grin like he knows it. Even though later in the hospital he doesn't remember putting his hand against the window, I definitely think during the time of that near-death experience, he sees the truth of the original timeline. It's interesting too, remember when Desmond saw Charlie in the Flashes Before Your Eyes episode? Charlie's playing his guitar in the street. He's actually singing Wonderwall by Oasis, who a lot of people compare Dryshaft to. The interesting part here though is that in the song Wonderwall, there's a phrase in the chorus that goes, you're gonna be the one who saves me. And when Charlie sings this one line, they focus the camera and audio on him. And as we see in this episode, Desmond does save Charlie. The next scene is in the hospital where a doctor asks if Desmond had any hallucinations, which Desmond isn't sure about. So they want Desmond to get an MRI and the technician asks if he has any metal on him. He also is given a panic button, but he's told not to push it, which is kind of ironic because as we all know, his job was to push a button in the hatch. When I was watching this MRI scene, I couldn't help but remember the time back in season one where Kate ran by the MRI room. Now MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, but clearly it said on the sign there, Magnetic Resonance Imagining, maybe a clue. As the MRI starts up, Desmond immediately sees the vision of Charlie again, showing him the Not Penny's Boat message on his hand, and then a bunch of visions of Penny and his love for her, all of these visions coming from the original timeline. He freaks out and leaves the room, looking for Charlie. Desmond finds Dr. Jack and asks him about Charlie, as Charlie runs right past them, trying to escape. Desmond catches up with him and asks who Penny is. Charlie realizes Desmond saw something too, and tells him to go look for her. Desmond leaves, and he has to tell Mrs. Widmore, who's known for being a dragon, that Drive Shaft can't play at the charity event. But when Desmond introduces himself to her, she's actually really nice and says it's no big deal that Drive Shaft can't play. She also says, it's about time we met. Hmm, it's about time. <laughs> Desmond's all, so wait, you're not angry? And she's like, not at all, dear. What happened, happened. We also see Eloise is wearing two brooch-like things here. But what are they? Well, they kind of look similar to Juliet's mark that was branded on her. Remember back in season three, Ben ordered her to be marked instead of receiving the death sentence. One idea is that she's wearing two of them to represent the two timelines, maybe. Desmond starts to leave, but he hears the name Penny being read off from a guest list. Penny's last name was read off as Penny Milton, though. And at this point, you don't really know why. Maybe her mom's last name is Milton. She's probably not married, though, because when they're reading off her name on the guest list, they said she wasn't coming with anyone. Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket Never let it fade away